Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, July 11th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Microsoft Patch Tuesday today and we got patches for 54 different vulnerabilities, three of which were publicly disclosed by the time Microsoft got around to patch them. Overall, however, this doesn't really look all that interesting. A lot of these vulnerabilities that are being addressed are of course in web browsers, again sort of JavaScript issues and the like things that yes, you should patch quickly, but nothing really that sort of sticks out here. 17 out of the 54 or 53, if you don't count Adobe vulnerabilities are critical. What's almost more interesting than the official patches is a change that was made to Office 365. And that change does no longer allow the, the embedding of setting content MS files. Remember, those were these XML files that actually could include executable code. This was one way how attackers got recently around some of the macro restrictions and such that we have in Office documents. Since this was changed in Office 365, there isn't really a patch or anything that you need to apply for this particular issue. Now on Adobe's end, in addition to the Adobe Flash Player update that we also have included in the Microsoft update, we also got updates for Adobe Experience Manager, Connect and Acrobat and PDF Reader. The last one, uh, definitely don't forget that one, a PDF Reader is always a tempting target. Even though in this case, Adobe only gives the Adobe Reader patches a priority rating of two. So overall, I think it's an average patch Tuesday. Do focus on these browser issues. That's the most likely thing that's going to get exploited. And I really consider sort of Adobe Flash part of this. So make sure that's all up to date. And then we got what looks like a Mirai variant going after Android devices that have the Android debug bridge or ADB exposed. This is exposed on port 5555. We have seen a marked increase in scans for this particular port. Now, by default, this is not enabled unless you own one of a very limited number of devices that had this particular feature enabled by default. This is a debug feature only meant for developers. So a normal Android users should really never have a need to enable this debug bridge. But if it's enabled, then an attacker can gain unauthenticated access to your device and execute arbitrary code. And that's exactly what they're doing here. Now, I haven't had a chance to look at the particular malware very closely, but really looks like something Mirai-like. It really does mostly just scan. And then of course, infect devices. There is a static IP address that I list in a diary that's being used in order to retrieve the malware. And ESET is reporting that apparently a certificate was stolen from D-Link. Now, yes, we have heard about certificates being stolen before, but of course, uh, D-Link is a major vendor that doesn't usually raise suspicion. You may have some devices from D-Link, USB, network adapters or such that do require special drivers that will of course be signed using a D-Link certificate. Now, ESET found this particular certificate in targeted malware. So hopefully nothing that we'll see sort of more widespread. There was a second certificate used in this particular attack. This certificate was assigned to Changing as information technology. That's a Taiwanese security company. This second certificate was also revoked about a year ago. So hopefully it will no longer be recognized as valid on your system. 
And Arch Linux apparently needs to be a little bit more careful who it allows to manage uh, packages for its distribution. Apparently, if a package is orphaned, then pretty much anybody can take it over. One such orphan package was Acro Read, a PDF reader, and someone apparently took it over, made a git commit, and then did upload malware. Now, the malware at this point appears to be doing more reconnaissance. Uh, one part of the malware essentially just schedules itself uh, to keep running every six minutes. The second part then posts details about the system to Pastebin. And so far, it doesn't look like there's any kind of update mechanism. So that's really all this malware can do. But of course, the leaked data could then be used for additional follow-on attacks. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening. And if you're ever interested in taking a class with me, just check the bottom of the podcast show notes and you'll find links to upcoming classes. Next one will be in, I think a little bit less than a month in San Antonio, Texas. I'll be teaching intrusion detection. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.